After making my first uh, how-to video for removing stickers from a puzzle, I decided that it was time to try something a little bit more challenging for people, and that is how to make a slim tower. Um, now, the basic concept of making the slim tower can be found at a very good website. Of course, that website is twistypuzzles.com. So, if you've never been to that site before, then I highly recommend that you go visit that website. That's twistypuzzles.com. You can look it up on Google if you want. Uh, go ahead and go there now. Okay, uh, now what I want you to do is I want you to click on the Site Features section at the top of the banner. And then from there, click on Articles. And then under the section Building Specific Puzzles, the very first link is Tony Fisher's 3x3x3 Cuboid Transformations. And that is a sort of um, overall recipe for how to make these sorts of puzzles. So if you haven't had a chance yet, go ahead and go there now and check it out. So, to discuss how to make a slim tower using one of these, and of course one of these, uh, we have to first define how it is exactly that uh, that puzzle is made. Um, now again, if you've already visited the Twisty Puzzle site, like I said, then you should already have a decent idea. But in case you don't, this is a rough illustration from that website illustrating basically how the piece needs to be made. Um, it's not overly complex if you really think about it, but basically this is the core of a keychain uh, demonstrating how several pieces need to be joined together, the sections with dotted line, uh, dotted lines, and then of course the sections, the corner pieces that need to be shaved off in order to achieve that, um, in order to achieve the build necessary. So let's go ahead and draw those out individually. Okay, so to start making our slim tower, first thing we need to do is make four edge pieces. That's these pieces here. The edges, the middle edges. On that illustration that we were seeing earlier, of course, the edge pieces are shown to be a little bit uh, basic and crude, but we'll improve upon that a little bit. Uh, what you need, of course, are four of these edge pieces right from a Rubik's Cube. Now I'm also going to use a white piece here. I'm not sure which one shows up better, but whichever one shows up, that's the one you can look at. Now to cut the edge piece, uh, based on this illustration here, if you look at the edge piece, which looks something like this, what you want to do is you want to take a razor saw or whatever instrument you have, maybe a Dremel, you want to cut along this line. Now, if you can get, if you want to get fancy, you can kind of trim it like this for starters, but that's all right. It doesn't really matter. So the end result is something like that and like that. Once you've got your cuts made, and you need four of those pieces. Uh, the next step then is to shape this thing down uh, as necessary because this is a little bit too crude for use. Um, when you look at these edge pieces from the top when they form a slim tower type shape. Uh, what you notice is that the pieces looking from the top look roughly like this. Now the reason for that is of course is that the 30 millimeter keychain cube sits on the inside inside of those four pieces. Now if you can imagine that, just like that, these edge pieces are connected at these points to the edge pieces of a keychain cube. Now this is one partly stripped. Here we have a shaped piece and again we will go over how to make it later but for now again we're just studying a little bit of theory here. And again, see, this is uh, roughly how the piece is laid out. And if we look at the way that these four edge piece, uh, middle layer edge pieces will be, 
uh, what you're going to look at is something like this. Each of these pieces has been rounded and hollowed out. Okay, now you can use a pair of clippers to do that, to do most of the work. And just get in there and cut the pieces. Cut the pieces out. But ultimately you'll probably want to use something like a Dremel tool with a with a drum sander attachment to go ahead and, and finish up these pieces. This is just a little bit of rough cutting. Just to again kind of illustrate it. But again, you don't have to use a Dremel to do this. If you are pretty skilled with something like this, you can actually sit here and carve the pieces out individually. And that might be preferable for some. A little bit less noise, a little bit less smell. But of course, the danger of So again, you have your four edge pieces, if I can find a few more here. You have four edge pieces that the hollow in the middle, and again, this is for the purpose of fitting around the middle layer pieces, just like that. Well, you get the idea.